So Jim, when we were talking earlier, you'd mentioned uh, enthalpy, right? And we talked. You'd said that it was in the steam tables, and it's easy to see it once we start talking about the Mollier diagram. It's easy to see what enthalpy is doing in relation to quality and what H sub F is and what H uh, sub G is on the saturation curve. But it's all that middle stuff that's a little more confusing in how quality and enthalpy tie together. Um, could you talk us through what H sub F, H sub FG, and H sub G are, and then how quality, how, how we use quality sure. with those? Okay, so again, in your steam tables, you'll find you know, various columns uh, for a given saturated condition, right? You'll have the enthalpy of the fluid. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you'll also see a column H sub FG, so it's the enthalpy difference, if you will, between the fluid and the gas. So if you have a, a mixture, we'll get into how we can use this term. If we're, say, somewhere here underneath our phase diagram where we have a mixture of liquid and gas. And then, of course, if you're 100% saturated steam, the corresponding enthalpy for the gas would be in that column. So this is 100% liquid, 100% steam, and this is some mixture. So you're saying H sub F is on that saturation line, that curve we talked about earlier, right on, right on there. It's 100% liquid, right at the point where it's starting to convert. All those molecules, the, the, it's starting to absorb latent heat and just mm -hmm. start converting to steam. And then H sub G is at the You'd be all the way at this extreme, right? So basically you're at 100% that last vapor, molecule of water very converted. Last one converted from liquid to gas, and there you go. All right. Saturated steam. That makes sense. So, um, if we are at some in between state here um, and we want to calculate the total enthalpy of the system for that particular state point, um, we would use the steam quality factor, which is just, right, given the symbol X, it's going to be the mass of the vapor versus, or divided by the mass of the liquid and the vapor phases total. So it's going to be some fraction less than 1.0, right? Okay. So let's say uh, I've got a system that's got a quality, a steam quality of 0.5. And <clears throat> I wanted to calculate the enthalpy for a given state point. So I'll just throw some values in here. Uh, what do we want to use? Uh, let's say we normally operate at about 1,020 pounds gauge at our reactor, so that would correspond to about 1,035, which happens to be a data point here. So let's say we're at uh, 1,035 SIA, okay, and then that's going to correspond to <clears throat> a saturation temperature of 548. It's a change, but close enough. Okay, and then if I go to the steam table and I look at some values corresponding to that, what I'm going to get is 547. I'm going to round these off. This is going to be in ATUs for pounds mass. All three of those. So, um, question may be all right, I'm at saturated conditions, but I don't have uh, all steam or all saturated liquid. So, how can I calculate the enthalpy? Maybe my state points here on my, my phase diagram. Will you do that? It's going to be <clears throat> the enthalpy of the fluid plus the quality of the steam times the enthalpy difference between the fluid and the gas. So you'll be using this number here. Okay. So in our example here, if we went ahead and plugged and chugged the numbers, right? You have 548 plus. 0.5 times 643. Didn't pick a good number to divide by two, but <laughs> that's going to give me 320. 
1.5. And you guys can do the math, right? 869.5. Uh, thank you. 869.5. So you can see, right, so just to give you some insight here, why, why this is important, why we care about it. Um, if I was just at this, this point right here where I had all just saturated liquid, right, the amount of useful heat available to do work for me would be about 548 BTUs per pound mass. But by <clears throat> adding more heat, into the system to start producing steam, you can see even at 50% quality, this number is going up pretty dramatically, 850 BTUs. Right? And enthalpy is a unit of energy, which is a unit of work. It's, That's right. it's how much work is available That's for right. that steam to do. Minus the entropy problem. Minus the entropy yeah. problem, yeah. <laughs> and then you can see, right, at full saturated steam, you're up to almost 1,200. Right? So you've more than doubled it. So there's a lot of, water is really good at absorbing heat, um, especially if you're converting it from liquid to, to steam phase. And so, yeah, water works really good at absorbing the heat and then being able to use it to, in this case, drive a turbine. Once drive we turn it to steam, yeah. yeah. And that's what, uh, I had a student in a previous class talk to me about, well, it, the steam presents its own problems, right? Uh, steam leaks, it's hot, you have to keep it, you know, the pressure, all that. Why don't we just heat up a water a little bit and use water to, we can use water to spin turbines just, just like we use uh, steam to spin turbines, right? Mm -hmm. This is why, because steam does absorb so much energy and, and is a, there's, it's so much better for doing work. Mm -hmm. And you can see that right in your steam table. You see it right here in the steam table. Okay. Give us so, a right, well, uh, thanks for uh, letting me share some of my insights with you. And uh, maybe I'll be invited back. I don't know. Absolutely, Jim. This is uh, this was fun. Hopefully, I think helped answer is... some of the questions you may have had on some of these concepts or terms. And uh, if you have any questions that come up. Let Jason know, and he'll be happy to answer them for you. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Yeah, you're welcome.